So needles can be a bit of a hot topic in cross stitch. And I often hear cross stitchers asking, well, what's the best needle for cross stitch? Well, the best type of needle is easy to answer because that's a tapestry needle. But within that category, there's quite a lot to choose from. So let's see if we can dig into that a little bit more and find out what sort of factors should be considered when you're choosing a needle and what might make a needle better than another one. Hi there, Stitchy friends. I'm Kat from Catkin and Lily, bringing you the best tips, tricks and tutorials so you can get the most joy from your cross stitching. So today I want to dive into the world of cross stitch needles and explore a bit about the different types that are available, the different brands, and the factors that you might consider when choosing the perfect needle for you. And that's the key thing, the perfect needle for you. Because I can guarantee that we won't all like the same cross stitch needles the best. But there are some key things that you can think about to help you decide which ones you might like the best. Now, I have already made a video all about needle sizes and how to choose the ideal size for you and for each of your cross stitch projects. So I won't go into that all again here, but I will link that video up in a card and in the description for you. So today I'm just going to be focusing on the different types and brands of cross stitch needle available and questions to ask yourself when you're on that search for the perfect needle. And I was surprised during the course of my testing to find that there was one factor in particular that stood out to me as the mark of a really good needle. And of course, I'll share more about that in due course. As always, I'm going to start with the basics. Now, I've already mentioned that the best type of needle for cross stitch is a tapestry needle, such as these ones here. These are all marked as tapestry needles but you may also see it specifically sold as a cross stitch needle. So like this one here. Now these needles have two key features that make them perfect for cross stitch. They have a blunt or relatively blunt tip, which will easily slide through the holes in the cross stitch fabric without splitting the fabric or any embroidery thread that's already in the holes. And a bigger eye to make threading the needle just a little bit easier. Okay, so now we know what type of needle to use. Let's look at some variations on that that you might come across. And then I'll dive into comparing some different brands and highlighting the differences I found between them. So the first variation on tapestry needles that you might come across is petite needles. Now you don't find these in too many brands, but John James is one brand I've tried and they have the regular needles and the petite versions. Now, some sources say that these are one to two sizes smaller than regular tapestry needles, but this sort of depends what you mean by smaller. So for this particular brand, the petite needle is the same width as the standard needle, but it's just much shorter and it also has a bigger eye. So in terms of choosing the size, you would choose the same size as you would for your regular needle, but you'll just get a shorter version. Now, petite versions from other brands may be different in other ways, so it's worth checking. So I've zoomed in here so you can hopefully see the differences between the two needles. Now, I personally find them a bit fiddly to use because they're so short, but some people love them because the slightly bigger eye does make them a little bit easier to thread and being shorter can be helpful for using right down to the very last little bit of thread, if that's your thing. The second variation on a tapestry needle that I want to talk about is gold plated needles. Now let's start with the theory and then I'll give you my take on them. The theory is that the gold coating makes these smoother than the standard nickel coated needle, which reduces friction when stitching and makes the needle glide through the fabric more easily. So in theory, it gives you a smoother stitching experience. Now that theory has never really translated into practice for me. I realise this is a potentially controversial view, but I've never found a gold plated needle to be any nicer to stitch with than a nickel coated needle. In fact, I've sometimes found them a bit squeaky or sticky to work with. Now, if you genuinely find them better, then go for it. And of course, if you have a nickel allergy, then they are a super useful option. 
The other consideration is that the gold coating will rub off as you use them, more or less quickly depending on the brand that you have and how much gold was plated onto them. And once it's gone, you've lost all that benefit. So here's something to think about. If you swear by your gold plated needle and then you carry on using it after the gold has gone and you still like it, then there's a pretty good chance that it's just a good needle and the gold is nothing to do with it. There is also one fairly obvious downside to gold needles and that's the cost. The gold does make them more expensive than a standard needle. And it's worth saying you can get fully gold plated needles like this one but also needles that just have gold on the eye area. And that might make them a little bit cheaper than fully gold plated needles. Now, it sort of makes sense to only have the gold on the eye of the needle because that's where the majority of the friction is going to be when you're pulling the needle through the fabric. But it may also create a smoother experience to have gold across the whole needle. Now, following on from gold plated needles, you can also get platinum coated needles taking it to a whole new level of luxury, but again, not one I think is necessary. I don't have the packet, but this is a John James platinum coated needle. And slight spoiler alert for later, I didn't find it any better than a standard nickel needle. But as I say, I will talk more about this one later when I get into the needle brand testing. And of course, these are even more expensive than gold plated needles. So the next type of variation on tapestry needle you might find are twin pointed needles. So again, I've got the John James brand here. I'm sure there are others available as well. Now these have a tapestry point at both ends and the eye is in the middle. So they're designed for stitching up and down without reversing the needle. Now, if you stitch in hand like me, then these don't really work particularly well but if you stitch using a hoop or frame such that you have both hands free and you can stitch with one hand above and one hand below the fabric, then a needle like this might be able to increase your stitching speed. And it's been suggested that it also reduces thread twisting as well. Now, the downside to these is obviously they're very long, as you can see, and having the eye in the middle makes it more fragile and they can break more easily. Now, I have to say, I haven't really tested these because I stitch in hand, but maybe one day. The final variation I want to show you on tapestry needles is easy guide or ball tip needles. Now, I think you should be able to see here that this needle has a very tiny ball right on the end of it. And this can be helpful if you find it difficult to find the holes with your needle or you get frustrated by splitting the fabric or embroidery thread with your needle as you stitch. The teeny tiny ball on the end kind of guides the needle into the hole, which can make your stitching faster. Some people with shaky hands say these are particularly helpful for them. Now, I'll talk more about how I found these to use in my brand comparison. Now, the two fairly big downsides to these are that the eye can often be much smaller, so threading them might be a wee bit trickier. They can also be quite hard to find and when you do they are generally pretty expensive. I'll cover cost comparisons later on as well. So it's on to testing some different needle brands and these are the 10 needles that I've tested. I've used a brand new size 26 needle for testing all of them and of course this is not by any means an exhaustive selection because that would be impossible. I haven't included any fully gold needles, but there are a couple in here with a gold eye. Now, unfortunately, one of the ones I've tested, this one here is Pat's favorite needle, and I've included it, but it is actually discontinued now. It was just a favorite of mine, so I thought I would include it in the comparison. But as I say, unfortunately, you can't get it anymore. And I have included the platinum needle and also the ball tip needle. Now, it's fair to say that different brands of needles definitely vary slightly in terms of length, width, eye size, and bluntness of the tip. And I would say these are factors that people will have very different preferences for. It's very subjective as to whether you like a sharper or more blunt tip, or a longer or shorter length. So I will talk about these factors, but it will be different for everyone. But there's also one other factor that I think 
is possibly the most crucial for whether a needle is objectively good or not. And of course, I'll get into that when we talk about the testing. So let's talk about a couple of those factors that I've already mentioned. In terms of length, most needles will be pretty similar in length for the given size that they are. So for these size 26 needles, they're all about 3.4 centimetres. The only noticeable different ones are the peacemakers are slightly shorter and the pony needles are slightly shorter. And the ball tip needle is very slightly longer, presumably because of that little ball on the end of it. Now, some cross stitchers, myself included, prefer a slightly shorter needle as it can be easier to manipulate and it's easier to use right up to the end of the thread. But then a longer needle might be preferable if you find the shorter ones fiddly. It is a fairly marginal difference, but one that you can look out for. Now the width of needles, again, varies very slightly between needles and you probably might not see much of a difference just looking at them. But when you stitch, you sometimes notice that one feels a little bit wider than another one. And again, it just comes down to personal preference as to whether you prefer a slightly skinnier or slightly wider needle. Now I've said that tapestry needles have a blunt tip and they do, but most of them have a slight sharpness to them, whereas others are more obviously blunt. So in this case, the peacemakers and the pony needles, which were also the slightly shorter needles, also have a more obviously blunt tip, along with Pat's favorite needle. Now again, whether you prefer a slightly sharper tip or a blunter tip is purely personal preference. You might find the sharper ones have a slightly higher risk of splitting the threads or fabric as you stitch, but I've honestly not really found it to make too much difference. Now, eye width can be quite an important factor because that can make it easier or harder to thread your needle. And a couple of these ones I tested did have noticeably wider eyes and were definitely easier to thread. And those were the Peacemakers, the Bowhen, Pat's favorite needle, and the regular John James needle, but not the platinum one. So if you want to make your life easier with regards to threading your needle, then look for one that's got a wider eye. And I would guess a wider eye is also helpful if you like to use a needle threader. So with those general observations about the needles covered, let's look at how I found them to actually use. And I did two tests in stitching with them. I stitched the same heart motif with each of the needles. And then I also used each of them in a real life stitching scenario. I just swapped back and forth between them multiple times to actually put them into a rank order from the one I liked the best to the one I liked the least. Now I did all of this testing completely blind. So you can see I attached all the needles to a small piece of card. I popped the name on the back and then I numbered them and picked them randomly as I used them. So I made my notes just against the numbers on the card and I only turned them over to reveal which ones they actually were at the end. I was getting very curious towards the end to see which one was going to come out on top. Now I'll talk about the ball tip needle first because this wasn't really a blind test because I can see the ball on the end of it. So I didn't put it in my ranking and I actually really disliked using the ball tip needle. I found that the ball tip does indeed catch and stick into the holes, but that can be super annoying if it catches and sticks in the wrong hole. And then I had to take it out and move it to the correct hole. So it was by far the slowest for me to use. And it was also the only one where the thread knotted whilst I was using it. It knotted twice, but that might just have been coincidence. The little ball on the end also makes it really difficult to run your thread in at the back. Now, I would never discourage you from trying a ball tip because everyone's different and some stitchers really love them and find them helpful. For me, it's an absolute no because stitching is slower and more annoying. It's an absolute pain to run in the ends. The eye is very narrow, so it's harder to thread and they're very expensive. So there's no real upsides for me, but you might find completely different. So I took note of quite a few different things as I was stitching with these from how they felt to use, how easy they were to thread, whether the thread got especially twisted, 
And for the hearts, I also timed how fast I stitched them. Now, I didn't have a particularly hard time threading any of them, but it was definitely easier with the ones with the wider eyes. I would say none of them caused me any knots or tangles, apart from the ball tip that I've already mentioned. And I didn't notice any difference in how much the thread twisted. And to be honest, I would expect this because it's probably more related to how you stitch and maybe the thread you're using rather than the specific needle. Now, when I stitched the hearts, I didn't really think my stitches looked any different or neater for any of the hearts, except possibly the bohin one, which is actually this one here. But there was a variation in how long it took me to stitch each heart, from 8 minutes and 4 seconds to 8 minutes and 49 seconds. Although actually 10 minutes and 27 seconds with the ball tip needle. So you can see why I was not a fan of that one. Now, this speed difference could have been complete coincidence. I'll pop up a little rundown of the timings if you're at all interested. And you can see that the fastest one was with the Peacemakers. There were a lot that were around the eight and a half minutes. And there were a few, the Millwood and the DMC, that seemed to take me slightly longer. I honestly think there's probably not too much to read into the speed of these heart stitchings. Now, the real life stitching was super interesting. And of course, each one felt slightly different when switching back and forth, but I soon got used to each one. And I definitely found some just felt nicer to stitch with than others. None of them felt really awful, but there were definite differences. I found a few felt slightly easier to find the holes, but as I say, that wasn't related to the sharpness or bluntness that I thought might be a factor. Now, this one major factor that I've decided is the most important. And this is what I came across when I was doing my real life stitching. And it's how well the thread runs through the eye of the needle. I noticed that for some needles, the thread would glide through and for some, it would catch really badly in the eye. Now, as you stitch and you pull the thread through the holes, the thread will rub against the eye of the needle. So if that eye is rough and catching your threads, that will potentially cause damage to your thread as you stitch making it weaker and fluffier. Now, this is bad news because it could very much increase the risk of knots and tangles. And if it roughs up your thread, then your stitches might well look less neat. So, one big recommendation I have from this video is to avoid any needles or needle brands that I feel shred the thread. And there was a huge variation in the needles that I tested. So, this is my final ranking here from the worst going along this way and then along here. And this was my favorite needle. Now I've popped this one here. This is Pat's favorite needle. I didn't rank the ball tip needle as I've already mentioned, and I didn't rank Pat's favorite needle since you can't buy it anymore. And again, I actually knew which one it was, but it has, it has gold on the eye. Now that did also mean I knew which one was the pony needle because it's the only other one with a gold eye. So let's get into the reveal and I'll start at the bottom. My least favorite needle was the DMC. It was my least favorite to stitch with. It just, it didn't feel especially nice. It actually felt a little bit flimsy. It was quite slow to find the holes and it was the absolute worst for shredding my thread. So I think I'll be no longer using these. And very anecdotally, I have also heard other cross stitchers say they didn't like the DMC needles and that they've even had them break on them. So the next one, and you might have guessed because you can see the gold eye here, is the pony needle. It wasn't especially nice to use, not particularly awful, but the shredding of the thread was pretty bad. The next one I have here is the John James Platinum. Again, nothing especially good or bad about it. I found it quite slow to find the holes. It shredded the thread quite a bit, maybe because the eye is really quite narrow and it felt quite chunky to use. The next one was the Mary Arden needle. Again, it's, it's in this middle of the road category, nothing to particularly love or hate. It had a little bit of shredding of the thread so up to my number four spot, and that's the John James, so that's the standard one, 
which I liked better than the Platinum. Now, John James is a very well-established brand and a lot of stitchers rate these. It does have a nice wide eye and it's really quite nice to use. Nothing outstanding, but a nice one to stitch with. Little bit of thread shred, but less than all of these other ones. In my number three spot was the Millwood needle. Now, this was a huge surprise to me, mainly because it was the cheapest. I got a pack of 25 of these for just three pounds. Although most of the time, if you buy it as a normal pack of six, they're about the same cost as most of the other needles. But if you can get a bulk pack of them, then they can be cheaper. But maybe I should not have been surprised by how nice this was to stitch with. Because Millwoods are a very established British company. They've been making needles for a long time, since 1730 or so, in fact, so a really long time. It was very nice to use. It was very close to my top two needles. The thread run very smoothly through the eye and it was lovely to use. Now my top two spots, you've probably figured which they are by now. And it is the Bohin and I'm gonna reveal these at the same time, the Peacemakers, because there was so little to choose between these two. I kept swapping around which spot I was gonna put them in, to be honest. They both felt so lovely to stitch with. The thread ran super smoothly through the eye, absolutely no thread shred. And this is where it was interesting because the Peacemakers is a slightly blunter tip and the Bohin is a slightly sharper one. And I genuinely didn't have much of to choose between these two. I would have said I preferred a blunter tip, but apparently I don't. Now, even though I loved the Peacemakers and the Bohin the most, I still wouldn't label these as the best brand. They're just the ones I like the best. I fully expect that different people will like different brands. So you do just need to try a few out. Now, I would definitely use the Millwood needle as well, and I'll be stitching some more with this one. I possibly might even stitch to that as my favourite if I don't find any other problems with them in long-term use because I've used these two brands quite a lot. I haven't really used the Millwood so much and if it turns out to be just as good then that one would possibly go in my top spot just because of how cheap I can get it. Talking of cost, I realise this is a really important factor for a lot of stitchers and to a certain extent I think you get what you pay for with needles my top two favourite needles were some of the most expensive needles. But there are clearly some great cheap needles out there as well. Now, I would say a cheap needle isn't worth it if it's not very nice to stitch with, if it breaks, or if it's shredding your thread. So in terms of all the needles I tested, I did say the platinum needle was particularly expensive and the ball tip. The ball tip needles I found, they cost about £2.25 per needle. So yeah, that's a big outlay on a needle. The John James Platinum were £1, about £1.20. So again, quite expensive. Once you come out of those specialty needles, the two I liked that I say are the most expensive generally, they're about 50p a needle. These ones here are all kind of in the middle and they were all about 30p a needle. The pony ones, as I say, were pretty cheap. I got these for about 20p per needle. And I need the Millwood, which if you buy them in a pack of six like these ones, then you're probably paying, I think, about the same as these, about 50p per needle. But I bought a pack of 25, and I will link in the description where I got them from, which was Marie's Cross Stitch. And I got a pack of 25, which made it work out at 12p. So that's amazing value. I would probably still use them even if I had to pay 50p because they're still all as good as these ones. So my top three needles were potentially the most expensive ones. Now, I've mentioned that I don't feel like it's worth paying extra for a gold or platinum coating unless you just also really, really like that needle for other reasons or if you have a nickel allergy. And remember Pat's favourite needle? That was This was an absolute favourite of mine when it was available, it was about three times the price of these needles. So it probably wouldn't have been my go-to because 
it's it's not particularly nicer and it was a lot more expensive. Now, I've tried to test needles in as comprehensive a way as I could, but it's possible that if I had stitched more with each brand, I might find differences in long-term use, such as durability. I've heard stitchers say they've had needles that snapped, but honestly, this has only happened to me once, and it was with a very fine size 28 needle that I had been using for quite a long time. The two brands I've used the most is probably the Peacemakers and the Bohin, and I've never had one break on me. Now, I'm pretty sure that won't be the end of my needle testing because there are other brands that I haven't tried. I'm sure you will let me know if there are brands you love that I haven't tried and I'll probably want to try those out as well. And if you feel like I've done gold needles a little bit of an injustice in this video, then perhaps that's true. I haven't found them to be really good for me in the past, but I haven't tested them out with all the other needles that I have tested in this video. So I think perhaps it's worth me revisiting that. And there's probably another video in there somewhere. So watch this space. I hope you find a needle brand that you really love, or perhaps you already have one that you love. In which case, let me know in the comments, which is your favorite brand of needle. If you found this video helpful, then give it a thumbs up and I'd love for you to subscribe so you don't miss any of my future videos sharing tips and tutorials. Thank you so much for watching and happy stitching.